Um, Dion, I just wanted to, for a second, give you a chance to, if you wanted to describe just the process that you and your team went through um, in the selection of the city manager, and then we'll move on to council comments. Yeah, I'm Deanna Giordano, Human Resources Director of the City of Fort Worth. I'll first start with kind of just at the after the announcement of David Cook indicating his intent to retire in February of 2025. Um, the Human Resources Department met with the Mayor and Council to discuss kind of what the recruitment efforts and recruitment process should look like. At that point in time, in August of 2024, we identified that the Human Resources Department would pursue that search process on behalf of Mayor and Council. The Human Resources Department did an excellent job in reaching out to individuals and treating it like a search firm would. And so we identified um, qualities and qual qualities necessary and skill sets necessary for a city manager um, to be a candidate for consideration. There was a survey that was sent to Mayor and Council to provide information relating to education and quality skill sets necessary. Uh, that information then was used to develop a brochure to identify um, two potential candidates to put out to the public. That brochure was created and advertised in a number of different sites um, across the city of Fort Worth. We utilized LinkedIn, we utilized uh, Texas Municipal League, ICMA, the National Forum for Black, Black Public Administrators, amongst other uh, job boards to advertise that role. In addition to that, um, as as just as recruiters do, we have actually reached out to passive job seekers. So those are individuals that are currently looking for employment. We reached out to city um, managers in other cities across the nation. We reached out to deputy city managers, assistant city managers, county administrators to solicit their candidacy for this role. We received over 150 applicants of interest. In addition to that, of the of the 150, 120 were passive job seekers that we connected with, of which 38 applied. We received candidates from across the country, of which the majority came from Texas. But uh, in addition to that, there were candidates that came from 12 other states. Those candidates were then presented, and, and actually we were vetted and screened and tiered into um, categories for consideration for mayor and council. That screening process not only looked at their professional resume, it looked at their letter of interest. We also had a candidate questionnaire that dealt a little bit deeper into the candidate's experience, um, looking at relevant experience for the city of Fort Worth. Those candidates were then presented to mayor and council, of which they identified semi-finalists uh, to meet that they met, met with and interviewed. The um, candidate that we have here today in the resolution was identified by mayor and council as the lone finalist, and so that's what you have um, before you to make a decision on. Thank you, Deanna. Councilman Flores. I have a question for her. Go ahead, Councilman Reynolds. Yeah. I have a couple of questions for you. Thank you, Deanna. First, I want to thank you for the work that you have done in this process. Um, I even alluded to when we, uh, well, when this council body said that they wanted the HR department to do the search. I had a couple of questions about it. Number one, um, that you had the employees there to be able to do a search form, a national search firm, and continue to do the HR job that you're assigned to do each and every day. I also alluded to, if we didn't, we needed to get you some people so that you can actively do a good search. So we didn't do that, but you was able to do one, so thank you for that. I got a question for you. Uh, here in your role as HR or any other HR city, have you ever uh, conducted a national search for uh, any appointee or position? Yes. Okay. And in that opportunity, is it strange for a community to have input in the process? It is not strange for a community to have input. Thank you. But it's all driven by mayor and council. That's my point. Thank you. I'll uh, ask questions later. Um, Gianna, thank you so much for the work that you did. I to you, someone that comes from that also was advocating for HR to make sure that we got this back in capacity. And I know that y'all took on this because um, y'all are seasoned experts um, in this. And so, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for um, shoving this. We know that y'all are being told in many ways, but you're able to um, get us to this point. Um, the one question I had um, that I want to highlight um, when, when we were in closed session, um, y'all presented us with a binder full of the 154 resumes. Um, how much notice do we have to um, read those resumes? 
So the resumes that were provided in advance for the tier candidates were provided prior to meeting with Barron Council. The 154 were provided after, and that's just to give you the totality. Part of our services were to screen and vet those candidates on your behalf and provide you with a condensed list of individuals so you wouldn't have to go through 154. Right, that makes sense. And I understand why you are trying to help us out with that. Um, and I, I'm, I assured everyone on this dice as well as you that I would um, tell the God honest truth. Um, I had heartburn during that meeting because that binder of 150 applicants, applications, um, all the materials that we got, that was my first time seeing in that meeting before we went to last week's meeting. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify um, how much notice we had because it was a really important decision and I wanted, um, as a working professional, a data to um, under two, I wanted to be able to give my due diligence to that. Um, and so thank you for, I know you were under um, very specific constraints, but I want to appreciate you for that. And I just um, wanted to honor my commitment that I would share that publicly. That's all, thank you. Just one more question, Deanna. Thank you for your presentation and for your due diligence throughout this entire process. I've said publicly, I think we have the best HR director in the country, and we are very thankful that you've chosen to work here in the city of Fort Worth and your team. Um, is it fair to say that the majority of candidates, um, whether it had been the five that we narrowed it down to or even the 14, um, a majority of them would have wanted their candidates to be kept confidential because all of them were duly employed in other places um, and did not want to jeopardize their current employment? Yeah, as I mentioned, and we reached out to passive job seekers, so those are individuals that were currently employed for other cities or other counties. And so it was a consideration from the onset in our engagement with them is that their name be kept confidential. Uh, they had lots of questions around when their names would be released. Um, and really it was speaking to, first and foremost, I want to just say the volume of candidates really did express interest in the city of Fort Worth um, just because of the uh, mayor and council and just the a unity that you have here. But they were also concerned with just representation to their current employers, but also their communities and their residents. It was also occurring right before election season, so there were some local ballot initiatives that were on their local agendas. And so there was just consideration about their commitment to their community and their ongoing support. Thank you, Deanna. Appreciate that. Council Moore Flores, the floor is yours. All right, so I'm here tonight, and actually not against Jay's appointment to this position. I'm also not in here in solidarity with any city council members hollow writing about transparency because we know they do things that are not transparent when it benefits them. I think Jay is actually has a great resume, has done without the emotionality involved and the injuries that have been have happened to communities of Fort Worth. His resume stand, stands up against all the other candidates in this field. And I don't understand how five years later, in 2019 from 2019 to now, that we are still this bad at PR, that we are still this bad at engage in our communities. I want to say to the Hispanic leaders who have spoken for Jay, I wish that you guys would be a little bit more outspoken when it comes to things that really affect our communities. I love and respect you all very much, but the cognitive dissonance that this issue has caused within me is crazy. Hi, Ivani, you stop talking because you're just as compromised as anybody else in this day. And it's so infuriating. I have consistently stood up here at this mic when I ran for office, and the one thing that I always stood by was that communities are engaged, whether we want to hear their opinions or not, because these positions demand that they serve the people that vote us into those seats. I didn't run for city council three times just to have my name on a placard to talk down at people that come and fill these seats. And I know you're shaking your head at me, but don't act like you care about transparency. You don't. As long as the candidate or the person that's up for the job isn't saying yes to you, you're against them. So to Jay, I would say to you that since this agenda item is still up, despite all the fervor on it, that the votes are there to push this through. Jay, I will say that I actually am very proud of you. I don't know where you are, but I'm proud of you for busting your butt and putting in the time that you did to even be in the running for this consideration. And like I said, I know that I asked for your firing in 2019 around this same time at this same mic, but because the community was being so ignored and so pushed down at the time. 
But I do hope you success in this position, and I hope that one, we stop the practice of sneaking in agenda items on a city council agenda at last minute. Let's leave that in the past administration. And two, that you do work a little bit harder to listen to the smaller voice when they come to this mic first, especially those that do not have the luxury of coming here. Thank you for your time. Happy holidays. Deserts in a major city, we have a lack of affordable health care crisis. We have a lack of accountability from our law enforcement. Our city services have been struggling and while under David and previously Jay as well. We must meet our present day needs with tools, resources, and people that have the interests of our residents at heart. That being said, I stand before you to disprove this resolution to appoint Jay Chapa as the city manager of Fort Worth. I believe we're going backwards, bringing Jay back to city administration. I'm glad David's gone, and Jay is just saved the 2.0. We cannot overlook the clear conflicts of interest that are present. We know he's going to put city dollars in the pockets of his best friends, and we cannot overlook his involvement and lack of accountability when a Tatiana Jefferson was murdered and he failed in his duty to hold the police department accountable. We need an independent police oversight committee and Jay will stand in the way of that. And as far as the process of finding a new city manager to replace David, in these, four, in these past four months, what efforts were made on behalf of any of you sitting up there to involve community? And I mean community stakeholders that don't have the privilege to be sitting here in this chamber. I thank Chris and Jared for speaking up and advocating for a more transparent process and delaying the hire until we find someone that has the trust of community members and vision that would be less of the same old Fort Worth way and instead provide our growing population uh, and provide for our growing population by not forgetting the problems that ail our city. People have said, why wait? All things worth waiting for come in good time. And we need to ensure integrity and transparency are fundamental to the process of finding someone who will run this city. Do the right thing and delay this appointment. Okay. Our next speaker is I'm extremely disappointed with the city's entire process of hiring a new city manager since the beginning. This is, without a doubt, the biggest decision that you will make during your time on city council because you are choosing the person who will ultimately implement all of the decisions you make as a council. The city manager is the most powerful unelected person in the entire city, someone with that much influence over the lives of every single person in Fort Worth should be someone chosen through a fair and honest process. The choice to have the city's overworked and understaffed HR department oversee this hiring, despite all other major positions that you've appointed as a council using a third party firm for the search, was deeply flawed from the start. After years of David Cook slashing the budgets of every department except for police, the HR department doesn't have the resources to handle the responsibility uh, uh, handle responsibility of this magnitude while managing their already overwhelming workload. Amen. Not to mention the offensive lack of transparency throughout this whole process. One of the biggest things I hear again and again from city employees uh, alluding to is that they're scared of the public. And it's because the public is angry at the lack of transparency, yes. at the lack of community involvement at constantly feeling like their voices don't matter. They're angry that so often the Fort Worth way seems to win with those in power making backroom deals against the, uh, with amongst the good old boys club while the rest of us just have to suffer the consequences. Amen. I can tell you uh, I can tell you that the most surefire way out of this predicament is with transparency. Don't waste everyone's time and energy with this facade if you've already chosen a finalist from the start and then rush to vote in less than a week. Instead, be honest and upfront about the process. Give the candidates a fair chance at the job. Give the public a chance to meet yes. the candidates and for the candidates to meet the public and hear their concerns. Give the time and resources it takes to make sure this is done properly. Thank you, Chris Nettles and Jared Williams, for speaking up on behalf of the community and for the long-term health of Fort Worth. I hope that the rest of you join them. I hope that you all restart this process and do it the way that it should have been handled from the start. And if not, I hope you delay this vote. Schedule public engagement Amen. meetings. If Jay Chopper really is the best choice for the It'll job, let that decision happen in the light of day with the trust and support of the people of Fort Worth. Amen. I'm calling you after these two speakers. Um, I'm here today as a Fort Worth community member to oppose the appointing of the new city manager, Jay Chapa. A city manager acts as the chief executor, executive officer of a city, a city that is made up of community members. Community members who did not get a say in this process or who is going to be hired. Opportunity was made for community to engage in the selection of the chief executor, executive um, equity officer, Christina Brooks and the same for the selection of the police oversight director. 
But with the selection of the city's chief executive, you all chose a secretive exclusionary process that is largely being supported here today by corporate, real estate, and establishment power brokers. This process is a blatant disrespect to transparency and upholds the Fort Worth way. You all are supporting the status quo. Jay Chopper's top qualification is that he will bow to the powers that be and give Fort Worth police immunity from being held accountable, as he has done before and did after the murder of Tatiana Jefferson, just as David Cook did for the past 10 years. The city manager is supposed to be a key link between elected officials and the community. And yet, the city council is once again making decisions without any input from the community. Amen. Space was made for consultants behind closed doors while community voices were ignored, denied, and drowned out. Yes, we are here advocating for accountability and transparency for a decision that heavily affects our community right now and for generations to come, as this person will be leading the hiring of the police chief and developing and implementing the 2050, 2050 comprehensive plan for the city. How can we trust in a city manager that was selected through a regressive hiring Amen. process? Why is this process being rushed and happening behind closed doors? And why is community being denied and ignored? And why do we continuously be ignored by this city council in every aspect and in every policy? Oppose this vote and delay the hire. Choose accountability and transparency. And for once, choose community and actually include us in the process. Amen. Our next speaker. This is the first time I've ever addressed y'all as a Fort Worth resident. So, Elizabeth Beck, I'm now in your district. Woo. All right. Um, to Mayor Parker, Fort Worth City Council, and City Manager's Office, on behalf of the Fort Worth's underserved communities, we the people urge you to prioritize transparency, accountability, and meaningful community engagement in the selection process for our next city manager. The city manager plays a critical role in shaping the policies and daily operations of our city, ensuring equitable allocation of resources and, the bridge, and bridging the gap between elected officials and the residents they serve. This decision must reflect the voices and needs of all Fort Worth residents, especially those historically marginalized. It is imperative to select a leader who exemplifies diplomacy and partiality and the ability to actively listen to all perspectives while justifying their decisions with integrity. The next city manager must have a proven commitment to equitable governance and the ability to foster trust between the city, law enforcement, and the communities impacted by systemic inequities. The recent history of strained relations between underserved communities, the Fort Worth Police Department, and the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office underscores the urgency for a city manager who can prioritize holistic accountability and drive solutions that build unity. In this context, we must state clearly that Jay Chop, a former deputy city manager, does not fully represent the community he has served. His tenure reflects a pattern of disengagement from the voices of underserved population and a failure to embody the, voice, the values of accountability, equity, and transparency required for this role. Our communities have not seen the proactive leadership necessary to address systemic issues or to ensure that city budgets are allocated to support those most in need. Fort Worth desperately needs a city manager who will engage authentically with all communities, ensuring their voices are heard in decision-making processes, manage the city's operations with fairness and efficiency, prioritizing underserved communities and resource distribution, hold law enforcement accountable to rebuild trust and ensure safety for our residents, negotiate and, meditate and mediate with stakeholders to find balanced, equitable solutions that benefit all Fort Worth residents. The decision for Fort Worth City Manager is a defining moment for our city. We call on you to select a leader who will champion the values of equity, transparency, and true community engagement someone who serve, who will serve not as just an administrator, but as an advocate for every Fort Worth resident. I want to thank Jerry and Chris for publicly coming out and speaking uh, and just letting us know and standing firm and us needing more accountability and transparency. I'm proud of both of y'all. Um, and I really just hope that you guys take the time and, and really make a decision to include the community because I just feel like it's like a broken record, just coming back and forth Thank doing you, the same thing. So I always talk about transparency. Lydia Faith. Amen. When it comes to transparency for our community, our city officials, our residents, 
how do we put this out to our children that there's a process as they grow up to get a good education? Mayor Parker, you actually went to Fort ISD and spoke and against the current superintendent. Amen. When we already had a superintendent that's been a um, the interim back and forth, and she's back in there again. It's amazing how we'll go out of different cities and states and look for employees to bring over to our communities and our cities to run a position that we're well capable of doing here in our community. I don't have anything against Mr. Chapa. What I do have against is the transparency and the adequacy of actually allowing the community to be a part that pays y'all's tax dollars, pay, pays y'all's salaries. All of our tax dollars are put in these situations and we don't even have a word or a say so as it's being processed. I want to thank uh, Jared and Chris for actually standing up, even though they still have to work with the rest of y'all up there on their diets. I'm quite sure there's going to be some repercussions and y'all are going to talk behind their backs and have a problem with them, as y'all do with some of us when we speak against things that y'all are doing as well. But even with that being said, there should be transparency and an accurate position as you apply, as he applies for this position. As um, the pastor said previously, he has been in position. And why did he step down then? And why was he removed? There's so many negativity things that are going on in our community that we not only need you and the rest of y'all to not just be a mayor for the, the west side, but a mayor for the east side, a mayor for the south side, and the stop six area, and I speak very highly of that area. But at the same time, we're gonna need Jay Chopper, if he is put in this position, to also be a city manager for the west side, as well as the east side, the north side, and the south side. Stop selecting those who y'all want to provide and protect for, and take up for, and do things in, in special Amen. privileges for. We are all human. We are all taxpayers. We are all homeowners, families with children, and education that is needed in our city. We need y'all to act accordingly and give the opportunity of everyone, of Amen. everyone who wants to apply for this position. And Councilman Davis, I am so disappointed in you today. I'm really disappointed, and, and I, I still call you a friend, but I'm disappointed in your position as professional. So with that being said, I just want y'all to understand that as we look at each one of y'all in your faces and tell you that we are taxpayers and voters, we expect y'all to act toward us accordingly. Thank you. Amen. Our next speaker is Patrice Jones. We choose to circumvent established processes and hiring a new city manager raises serious questions. Not only about this specific appointment, but also about the future direction of our city and its commitment to democratic principles. No, the process of hiring a city manager is not a matter of under the table arrangements, political horse trading, or backroom deals. It's an important decision that should involve every facet of our community. A city manager isn't simply an administrative cog. City managers influence policy, shape city, priorities and manage key departments that impact this city's residents' lives daily. For this council to double down on muscling through a hire this critical to the forward movement of the 12th largest city in this country without transparency and public involvement sets a dangerous, dangerous precedent. When con communities that, you, that put you on the desk are shut out of the decision-making proceedings, the very foundation of our democratic system is undermined. We don't elect our city leaders to act in isolation. We expect them to be stewards of the public's trust, ensuring that decisions are made with broad input and accountability. This city belongs to all of us, and it is our right and indeed our responsibility to have a voice in how it is governed. And, within the, with, and with the pending resignation of Chief Neil Noakes, the potential collateral damage of this bad faith decision, which will result in an unmitted city manager leading the search for a new police chief, someone who is responsible for public safety and the protection of residents, this bad faith decision has potential to reverberate throughout our city for years to come without transparency. We risk placing the future of our police department in the hands of someone without a mandate from the community, without the trust and input of the very people whose safety is at stake. Ignore us if it helps you to justify this proposed malfeasance, but it will most certainly result in a further erosion of an already threadbare trust between our city government, our police force, and the people who helped put you on the desk in the first place. 
I urge you to reconsider rubber stamping your proposal and restore the trust of the people you represent by allowing public participation in the appointment of the city manager. Are you people busy playing chess? On September 24th, I stood before you made a request as it relates to the city manager's position. I urge you not to play politics with my village. Like with Chief, when we needed the chief of police, we both agreed on Chief Notes. We went through the process and we hired him. My village asked me, Bishop, why do you go down there? It looks like those who looks like us are fighting for us. And then white folk gonna do what white folk want to do. Should I go back and report to them that they're right this time? This is an irrational, capricious, arbitrary decision. When the city was about to burn down because of Jackie Craig and Tatiana Jefferson, the Negro pastors' ideas and considerations were important and relevant. Have we lost our relevancy? You people are the moral police and the fiduciary managers of our city. We have placed a lot of confidence in you. This decision does not sit well with me. It reminds me of women to North Carolina massacre of 1898, how people got in a hurry to put out their narrative, only to manipulate the truth, and as a result, countless of Negroes lost their lives. Again, Black Wall Street Tulsa, 1921, the village of Greenwood was burned down because of rush false narrative. We suffer the most in my village when you rush your dudes. I am appalled. I am appealing to your sense of consciousness. We're asking for a thorough vetted process. No backdoor deals, no good or boy handshakes on the 13th hole at the country club. No 7th Street influence, no secret society, hooded meeting, no Houdini disappearing acts, or David Copperfield slight hand movements. Let's have an open, righteous, due process. Let's do the right thing. Perhaps Mr. Chopper is the right guy for the job, but let's not rush the decision. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and waddles like a duck, it must be a duck and a lame one at that. Don't make this lame rush decision. I'm pleading with each of you. I'm not yelling and cussing and fussing. Ms. Bivens, I'm asking for delay, not denial. I appreciate the work Mr. Chopper has done here. He had the fortitude and the comments to do what no one else would do when he fired Fitzgerald, and I appreciate that. But he cost us $10 million when he did The only thing I'm saying, I don't have a problem with Mr. Chopper. I have a problem with the process. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, without Mr. Chopper and Kelly Allen Gray, there will be countless of bodies laying over stop six without the VIP. He has done well. Those who oppose him, would you please stand up? Those of you who oppose him, thank you very much for your time. Our next speaker is Alan Lobon. 